Johan, at this meeting, uh, Luis Passar has presented some data from Caspian study, further providing clarification on patterns of progression, biomarker evaluation. Can you walk us through that data? Yes. Well, um, so what, what was presented was, um, of course, a repeat of the output of the Caspian data. And in the, in the Caspian data, um, pretreatment biopsies were not mandatory, but they were more frequent than they were in IM Power uh, 1 where it was about one-third of the patients. Here, if I remember well, there were uh, tissue samples in 55% of the patients. And um, so the, the, the authors looked at um, uh, the pdl one expression on tumor cells and on immune cells. And what they found was that the, if, even if you use the 1% cutoff, the pdl one expression on tumor cells of small cell lung cancer was very low uh, the PDL1 expression on immune cells was uh, present in a more substantial degree in only 20% of the patients. So it's again relating to what I just said about the tumor microenvironment. You don't have to detect much, unfortunately. And then when they made the, uh, so they, they used the SP263 antibody and they used it in that trial as a continuous variable and they found some some relationships, but if you put them together in a forest plot, again, there was no biomarker on tissue that could tell you, that could predict which patient is the one that really has the benefit from adding uh, durvalumab to the platinum etoposide. So, do we use PDL1 expression to select therapy for small cell lung cancer patients? Not at no. the moment. Not at the moment. Um, expression levels tend to be fairly low, and there was a single agent PEMPRO trial that, that did that, and I believe it was around 20% or so had some degree of expression, so majority of patients don't. Um, but, I, but it's not routinely used, at least not, not in our practice. You mentioned single agent PEMBRO, Pasi. It has an FDA approval in the US for third line therapy. Is that something you routinely use in your patient population? Typically, uh, typically in, the, in that setting we do use it. Uh, there's obviously uh, uh, been exploration of other immune uh, checkpoint inhibitors there as single agents, but with the approval of Pembro, uh, we, do en we do end up using that. And sometimes, sometimes you do see uh, the uh, remarkable responses like you do see in non-small cell, but I tend to think they're a little bit less common. Now, when we use chemo plus a PDL1 inhibition in frontline setting, is there a role for immunotherapy in the second line setting? In small cell lung in cancer. In small cell lung cancer. Um, at, at the present time, um, there could be a role for combined immunotherapy. So combining anti PD1, PDL1 with anti CTLA4. Um, uh, but it's still a field that is pretty much in exploration. The, the, the reality is that after first-line failure in small cell lung cancer stage four, there is no real good treatment. So these patients are in general better off if you have the opportunity to include them in a clinical trial. That's probably the best that you can do. But of course, there is, um, there is uh, work uh, ongoing with new immunotherapies, uh, especially cellular therapies or bispecific antibodies that may, um, um, together with uh, checkpoint inhibitors, perhaps have an effect on that aspect, but clearly that is way too early for clinical practice. What salvage therapy options are you excited about, uh, Chol, as you see all the presentations at the ESMO and World Conference? Uh, except for immunotherapy. Besides uh, immunotherapy, do you see anything coming down the road? I've heard some data about lerbinectadine, which is leading out hopefully in the next year or so. They had about 100 patients treated with monotherapy, and the uh, response rates were about 45% in the sensitive small cell lung cancer patient population. Which, which is pretty good. Which is, uh, which is good, good. And, and, and perhaps, you know, as the only approved therapy there is topotecan, which can be a tough treatment, uh, uh, especially if administered the, uh, for the five days in a row uh, regimen. So again, having alternative uh, strategies in that scenario uh, would be great, but I, I agree with Johan, that is definitely an area of absolute need for clinical trials and new drug development, but 
good to, to, good to know that they're we, coming. We, we will hear a, a little bit more about Lurbinectidin in the future, but uh, well, uh, for me a bit unfortunately, the phase three trial will compare the standard, which is Topotecan and is a rather poor standard, with uh, not with Lurbinectinin, but with Doxorubicin plus Lurbinectinin. So it will not be a full, pure picture. But anyway, it's, it's, it's nice to look forward to these results. Right. So to sum up this part of the conversation, in small cell lung cancer, we finally see some improvement. We know that a TESO plus chemo is already approved by the FDA and is used in clinical practice in the United States. Caspian data clearly show that DERVA also belongs in that space with very comparable uh, improvements in overall survival and PFS as with atezolizumab. So we look forward to having DERVA as another uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor in the frontline space for small cell lung cancer. And just to add, just a few weeks ago, the EMA also approved uh, platinum etoposide atezolizumab. So clearly the use of these agents is going to expand to other parts of the world as well, which will be good news for our patients with small cell lung cancer. And as the panel clearly pointed out, biomarkers for these patients, uh, options beyond first-line chemoimmunotherapy are all going to be important research questions moving forward.